Hey, welcome to Banjo Blitz. Today we are going to talk about banjo setup. One small slice of banjo setup, and that is head tensioning. And if you watch to the end of this video, after the tips I give you, I'm going to show you an additional kind of bonus tip it, that is a little bit of banjo arcana, some setup wizardry that I bet you've never heard of before. Anyway, let's get on with it. So inevitably, when I have a new student and they bring me their banjo for the very first time, we sit down together, go over their banjo. I like to understand what my students are working with uh, because it helps me tailor the lesson and I can help them with basic setup stuff. So we go over the banjo with uh, just a general, general glance over the instrument and almost all of them walk in with a banjo head that is simply too loose. So I am an advocate of a highly tensioned banjo head. Now you guys know by now the tone I'm looking for is voluminous, it's uh, shimmering, it's glowing, it's brassy, it's bronzy, it's punchy, it's, it's loud. That's how I like my instrument to sound. So that's how I, that's what I set up towards. Those are the very, those are the, the attributes that I want to kind of coax out of an instrument when I, when I set one up. So the first thing I'm going to do for this lesson, I've kind of been thinking how I can share with you guys how I, how I, deal with head tensioning. And instead of like taking it all apart and walking you through everything, I'm not gonna do that because I think it takes too much time and, and I, don't, I don't think it's that useful. I'm, so I've come up with three ways to show you via video how I tension my banjo without taking anything apart or spending a ton of time on it. The first thing is tap tone. So I'm going to mute my strings and I'm gonna tap on both of these instruments. I'm going to give you an example of an 11 inch pot and a 12 inch pot. You want to compare the right diameter of your pot because if you compare a 12 to an 11, you're gonna get all screwed up. So without further ado, here is the sound of an 11 inch banjo pot. Okay, and let's do the 12 incher. Mute the strings. So now you can compare both of those tones, whether you have an 11 or a 12 inch banjo, and you can see where, you're, where you are in terms of head tension with your own instrument. Now there are variations with instrument to instrument. Each tap tone is going to be different because we've got things like different woods, different mass, different metals, and of course different tone rings. So that's all gonna play into how the banjo sounds when tapped. But I think it's gonna give you a rough idea of how tight, how high I'm pitching this head and they're tight, they're really tight. The second way I can show you is I can lift the banjo up like this and if I squeeze down on the head with a fair amount of pressure, I am barely able to depress the head with my fingertips. It's that tight on both of these instruments. So you can check your head tension that way. The third way, and this is probably the least scientific way of checking head tension, is to feel the back of the head. You can feel where the bridge feet are if your head is tensioned up as high as mine, but it's just a very slight indentation. It's not a huge dip or uh, a huge lump there where the bridge feet are pushing down on the head. Very slight. When I close my eyes, I can definitely feel the bridge feet, but it's really a pretty mild dip. Now that's good because you don't want bridge a bridge to sag into the head too much because that can impact not only your tone, but the playability of the instrument. A bridge designer and maker wants their bridge to say, stay in a, in a certain shape. And once it goes beyond the outlines of that shape, it really, the bridge becomes deformed and it's not really doing the work it should. So it's something to be mindful. And it's an advantage of having a head that is highly tensioned, you don't get bridge sag or, or deformation. If you're setting your banjo up to be super plunky, that is a risk. You can really, uh, the, the, head, the string tension can really uh, depress the head cause the bridge to deform and your strings kind of get wacky, your action is a little wacky. I've noticed tuning issues, banjos staying in tune with, with uh, really loose heads. So that's another advantage of having a tightly wound head. Okay, so those are the three elements that I can show you right now that, that can get you off the ground in terms of tightening your head. I'll, let me show you how I go about the patterns I use. I try to bring down the tension hoop as evenly as possible, right? over the head 
You don't want one side of the tension hoop to be, you know, down and the other to be up. So the way I manage that is I go slow. I usually do a quarter turn once they're all, they're all finger tight. And I go across. So I'll do this bolt, then this one, then this one, this one, and so on in a clockwise way. Sometimes I use a star pattern where I'll go boom, 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 boom. It doesn't matter. As long as you're bringing down the tension hoop evenly on the head, it really doesn't matter. Don't overthink it. Don't over-engineer it. Uh, it. You know, you don't need to be a Rhodes Scholar in physics to figure this out. You can just, uh, you can just use common sense and, uh, and, and just go with your gut. That's fine. So what is this piece of uh, banjo wisdom that uh, I wanted to impart to you? Well, years ago, a really wonderful banjo player by the name of Ed Britt showed me a technique of tensioning the head that he calls differential head tensioning. And I think it originally comes actually from Roger Simonoff. Uh, Br uh, Ed Britt mentioned that um, the, something in Roger's work that, he, that inspired this idea. So I want to give credit to both of those guys. I did not come up with this. And uh, so, and I'm not an expert, I'm just the guy who plays the banjo, so take it for what it's worth. But I get great results from this technique. So differential head tensioning is applying different tension to different areas of the head. Here you tighten more, and here you tighten more, and these brackets over here, and here you leave a little less tension. So the idea behind this is that by tensioning these brackets and these brackets a little higher than the rest of the banjo, you create bands of tension that run parallel to the strings and support the bridge almost as if they are braces in a flat top acoustic, acoustic guitar. I don't know what it's doing. I don't know the physics. I don't really understand it. I do know that it does increase um, it does increase sustain and volume moderately. Like it's just a little oomph that I can give to a banjo that, that makes it really shine and glow. So uh, what I do is I bring the entire head up to medium high tension and then I put a little English on these four brackets, maybe these six brackets, depending on you know what I'm going for or how it's sounding. And I do the same. I put a little English on these brackets down here. I don't detune these. Ed Britt does, or he did when I talked to him about it. He would actually loosen this to, to probably create a more defined band of tension. I do this, uh, I, I'm pretty moderate about it, so it's just a slight little oomph I give it, and I feel like it really does improve the sound of the banjo. So that uh, I don't think many people realize that that is a possibility, that differential head tensioning exists. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Again, uh, Ed Britt was instrumental in, in me discovering this, so I want to give him all of that credit. So uh, when do you know when you've put enough tension on the banjo head? This banjo head on this guy over here actually is, is uh, ripping. There's so much tension on this banjo head, there are little tears in it, just a couple. It still sounds great, and it's been like that for 10 years. I don't expect it to change anytime soon. So it's stable. It sounds wonderful. But you will get to a point when you're tensioning up your head where the banjo will sound a little choked. So just, you got to go with quarter turns, play the banjo. You know, you'll have to retune after every pass because tensioning that head does drive the banjo out of tune. You'll have to just tweak the tuning. So it's a tedious process. You go step by step and you bring it up a little bit at a time and eventually you're going to get to the point where the sound is choked. Like it sounds like uh, not muted, but uh, just not full. So when you hit that point, you're going to have to dial it back. So I would encourage you to experiment. Do be careful with your instrument. Some banjos are quite fragile. Most Modern banjos are so well built and so well designed that they can take quite a bit of head tension. But you definitely, if you have any doubts, check with your manufacturers, get hooked up with a luthier, uh, call, call the company that made your banjo and they can probably talk you through uh, their process, uh, uh, how tight you can make that head. But uh, so that's it for this week. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And uh, I'm curious how you guys set your banjos up. Uh, put, them in the, put them in the comments. All right, I will see you next week with Banjo Blitz.